Hi all, I wanted to do a bit of a review of um, my uh, 2015 um, BMW GS Adventure. I just got back from about a 2,000 mile journey and uh, the bike currently has about 6,500 miles on it. And uh, I just wanted to uh, go, over, go, over, go over some uh, impressions um, that I have on the bike. A little bit about my riding experience. I rode uh, dirt bikes as a kid and then didn't ride for many, many years and then wanted to get back into riding. So in 2008, I bought a 07 650 GS. And then about a year later, bought an 09 800 GS. Um, and then put about 15,000 miles on that. And then I bought a uh, 1200 GS in 09. I bought, it was a demo. And uh, put a ton of miles on that and uh, sold it several months ago and then bought this adventure so this is where to me this is the most refined of all those bikes um, I don't really have a lot of complaints about it at all it's incredibly comfortable powerful it, it's just uh, feels like a very uh, ex extremely refined and, and well designed and ergonomic motorcycle you know I, I love it so um, but I just wanted to go over a few things um, in terms of my impressions um, this bike was fully optioned pretty much except for the exhaust, that uh, the, uh, the optional exhaust. So I think it has pretty much everything else. It's got the GPS and um, this is the cover obviously. The GPS is a bit stupid um, and uh, the way that I use it is, is I, uh, you know, I'll do a route in uh, Google Maps or Google Earth. Then I'll export it out um, and convert it so that it can be imported into Garmin Basecamp. And then I'll put the map um, from Garmin Basecamp on the GPS. And uh, that is works nice if I'm following a particular scenic route that I plotted out. So that works really well. The weird thing, you know, what I mean by it's stupid is like if I take another, if I take a turn on that route that is, doesn't correspond to the route that I've uh, uploaded, it'll try to always pull me back to a particular um, position and it'll constantly recalculate until I exit out of the route and then, um, you know, restart the route, then it'll pick up from where I am. Okay, so yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. Uh, that way and and I think it needs to be a little smarter. Um, the keyless entry is great. It was it's an option that I wouldn't think that I'd you know add to the bike but once I've uh, messed with it um, I just the key is in proximity and I can start the bike and do everything I need to do. It's just a great uh, convenience feature that I really can't imagine living without. Um, it's, it's fantastic. So um, the other um, a little thing about the uh, gas tank, um, this is a little quirk that I sort of discovered early on, that I had to really sort of push it down when I was closing it to make it lock or else it was sort of half, it would sort of half uh, lock and then I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to open it. And so um, you kind of really have to, so kind of really have to, so I can't really even do it with one hand. So lock it there. Yeah. And so, yeah, that, you know, took me a couple minutes to figure out, like, why wasn't it unlocking? And I had to push it down and lock it. And, um, and then I could, then I could open it. So, uh, probably just a little bit of lubricant in there would help it sit. Uh, the other option, the Shift Assist Pro, um, can't imagine living without it. Probably something I wouldn't have ordered on the bike if I had uh, had the opportunity to option the bike out. I uh, use it 95% of the time on the downshifts. And, you know, just for, you know, if I'm screaming through the gears and really accelerating hard, it's nice just to sort of bang the lever up to change gears. And it's really fast and uh, really fun. I don't ride like that often. Um, to me, it's more like, you know, if I'm slowing down, you know, about to make a turn, coming up to a stop sign, um, it's nice to be able to sort of keep the power on the ground, if you know what I mean, just by hitting it and you're not pulling in the clutch. And so um, it rev matches and everything for you. It's like the ESA. On the 09 GS, I, you know, it came with ESA and, you know, didn't really think much of it after using ESA. And uh, it just... Uh, you know, it, it became something that I really felt like, really feel like 
I couldn't live without. It's just so nice that, you know, to be able to change those modes and change the ride and everything like that. So Shift Assist Pro, highly recommend. Um, you know, another, you know, something, the uh, the GS, the, the 09 GS had much narrower pegs. I love that these are much more comfortable, they're wider, you know. Um, and again, you know, getting the GSA, one of my rationalizations was, you know, I wouldn't have to option the thing out or, you know, add a bunch of accessories, I mean. Um, and um, I've added a couple. Um, here's a huge, on my 09, I had some grip tape here and I could put my leg up over the cylinder head, you know, and that was comfortable. But on this bike, there's a lot less room in here. So I added the highway pegs from Adventure Designs. Huge, put my leg up over here and, you know, um, you know, helps stretch my leg, but it's also great for ventilation, you know, starting to get on hot days, you know, put your leg out and you get a nice airstream uh, up your leg and, uh, you know, nice, great for cooling. Okay, the other, uh, accessory that I've added is this uh, well this actually came off my own 9 GS and you know I put probably four windshields on that bike to see if I could you know just get it get it how I wanted it but um, so I had this on my own 9 uh, I'm a bit taller I'm about 6'1 and I'm sort of long in the torso um, and couldn't really extend it the windshield up to a point where you know it was really flowing smoothly uh, around my helmet. Um, so I added this, you know, another, oh, I don't know, four inches or so makes it perfect. I'll never need to add a windshield, uh, a higher windshield to this, this bike at all. Um, this, this does the trick for sure. So, um, other accessories, let's see. Um, that's pretty much it, you know. I I, I haven't done the, uh, the 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 headlight or or the radiator, you know. Just something I don't think that I will need. Famous last words, I'm sure. Um, one thing that's nice, I just got through cleaning this bike, and you know, it's really easy to take the windshield off. It's really convenient. Um, it's just two bolts right here. These two bolts, this one, and then this one over here and then the windshield pops off. And then there's a little winglet here that comes out really easily. You can see that there. That's just two bolts there and there. So I can take everything off. I can clean all the back of the speedometer and everything like that. Um, and then, you know, clean these, uh, the windshield and, and the, uh, this little winglet here. And it is um, really convenient. All the bolts are the same size, so it's, not a big deal. And speaking of all the uh, bolts being the same size, I did an oil change before I left. And, um, you know, to take the, uh, the skid plate off, all the bolts are the same size, super easy. And, uh, you know, drain the oil, that sort of thing. So uh, on the 09 GS, all the bolts were, not all of them, but they were, you know, different sizes and it was kind of a pain. Um, and this is just uh, actually much easier to do an oil change. The other thing that's nice is on my 09 GS, I had to do, you know, I went through, um, you know, seat pads and the stock seat, and then I bought a sergeant seat. Um, and, you know, none of, none of uh, those configurations were as comfortable as the stock seat for the adventure. So uh, my feeling is unless this starts to break down in a, in a, in a weird way and starts to get uncomfortable, uh, I'll never really need to um, buy another seat. The stock seat for me is remarkably comfortable. My impressions on the BMW bags, I, I prefer the Touratex. Actually, I had Touratex on my other bike. And I just like the Zega, the simplicity of the Zega. I felt, I think that the, the Zegas were much more um, well made. Actually, these are kind of sort of over engineered in a way with all these the corner pieces and everything. It's nice, the latches, you can go up either way on the on the top here, which is quite nice. Um, but the aluminum is not as, it's not as you know rigid, I think, as the Zega cases that I have. Um, and I just use a soft case on the uh, for the top case. I think the the other one, that's it's just my opinion, obviously, that the metal top case looks, makes the bike look a, a little strange. I like to take this top case off, you know, you know, as a, a you know, uh, it's just more convenient to do that uh, for me. Um, 
little bit about tires. The bike came with um, uh, knobbies, and uh, right now, for for my uh, most recent trip, um, went to the Anarchy Threes. Yeah, great road tire, great in the rain and everything. Really, really enjoyed it. But of course, these, in my opinion, are not 10% anything. You know, I think they claim they're 90 10, but uh, no. Um, I don't know, on a, on gravel, uh, gravel driveway or whatever, they're real squirrely. So anyway, I went to a Tixi 70 on the back and left the knobby on the front. Of course, that's the Anarchy 3 as well. Um, don't like the TXC70, I guess, I mean, I really like that Anarchy 2. I thought it was really fine on forest roads and, and in dirt and that kind of thing. Um, the TXC70 is, it's not aggressive enough. I'm waiting for the hide nows now. Um, I think they're the scouts. I think the hide now scouts, which are, you know, um, I've had the, I had those on my other bike and they were great off road, I felt and uh, you know pretty good um, as a road tire so um, in Eastern Oregon here I do a lot of forest service roads and that kind of thing and the hide now really did the trick there uh, these are road tires so yeah and TC 70 maybe I don't know with the knobby on front I really like the stability but it's just no grip on the back you know it's just like uh, probably probably will try to sell it or something I don't know um, but if I have a complaint about the bike it's lack of tires tire choice is actually on the back. You know, that's a 170. And hide now is not, I don't think, I think they do a 160, which I think will work. Um, but, uh, and supposedly they're coming out with a 170 and I'll probably just switch to the hide nows. Um, other than that, um, here's a little thing that I did, Chibi 7 on YouTube. And uh, he uh, got the idea from that video. He uh, vinyl covered vinyl wrapped the tank, uh, which I did. I think it gives it a nicer look, especially against the blue, as opposed to the white tank. Uh, all of this stuff was, you know, really easy to take off. Um, and the winglet, and then you need to take this whole piece off here. And uh, easy to do. Um, but if you're gonna do it, what I, would do is what I would do is recommend that you get extra material so that you can kind of experiment. And if you haven't done it before, that's what I did. And I screwed it up a couple times before I sort of got the feel for how it all goes on and how it adheres to the, the tank and how you stretch it and heat it. Um, I do have one of those little heater tools and that makes a huge difference. So I was using that and sort of my hands and some felt just to get it. But it took, it was all of three hours, you know, and it really, and I didn't, you know, first try, there's still some bubbles here and, you know, I've got this little, thing there, but you know, nice protection for the tank. And I think it really makes it look better as well. I think, so. I think it gives it a lot of nicer, uh, nicer contrast, you know? And so other than that, um, that is a tour of my uh, 2015 um, GS Adventure with 6,500 miles.